Welcome, thanks for joining us. Business Process Documents, or Documentation. In this section, I would like for you to think through what can you document from a process to allow you to grow your business or to sustain it. Most of the times, entrepreneurs start these businesses without really thinking about processes. Now, you probably have a process in your mind, it's just not articulated enough in a way that be useful for someone else to deploy it. I fall into that category all the time. I'm like, do this, and I'm like, what is this? Send this email, send what email? To whom, right? In my mind, I'd be thinking about something specific, but my staff or my team might not be aware of it. So you wanna think about what processes can you document so therefore you could make it a little easier for your team as you build them up to move forward, or for you to start handing off things as you grow your business. At one point, you have to let go of some of these activities that you're doing today. So let's take one simple process that you choose and walk you through how you could document it. With today's technology, I would encourage you to re-examine how would you document it. In the past, I would have told you to grab a pen and a paper and write it down, and maybe you should for those who are comfortable with that. But if you're not, then that's okay if you wanna use a computer, if you wanna use a mindset software, or you wanna use a, you know, anything else you wanna do, that's all up to you. But I do want you to think about the process and how you document it. Now, with today's technology, you can also record it through a whole action, through a Zoom recording or through a, just a video recording or through a phone recording, and now you can show it to someone else. Most of our activities within my team, we've recorded one to three minutes clips to show how someone could do it. An example, we have to set up Google Classrooms in my company all the time because we run now a lot of training online or a lot of co coaching online. So we have to set up these classes. So the person who was setting them up, she actually took the time and recorded, here's how you set up a Google Classroom. First, you go to Google. Second, you go ahead and click on these nine boxes in the top right corner, and it will tell you uh, Google Classroom. You click on Google Classroom. Then once you click on Google Classroom, to the right, right here, it says start a class or build a class or create a class. You click on that. Once you create the class, you have to name it. And she walks you those two steps. Now, I would encourage you to take the time to write it down first so you could know what you need to be done or at least think through it and then record it because you might think about something that may be missing. Because as you record it, you might say, well, I'm recording this and oh wait, before you set up the classroom, you gotta name the classroom. Do you even have a name for the classroom? Oh, I need to have the name first because I'm gonna have to move quickly once I do it. Second, an example of that would be, do you even have the people who you're gonna invite for this class. You might say, I don't know who I'm gonna invite yet. All right, that's fine. Go ahead and create the classroom. And then you can say, now you need to go find the list so you can invite them. Or you could email them this code that they could join via this code by entering this code to classrooms rooms. So there are all kinds of things that you could do to help that process create. So let's backtrack and see how this would work. So the first thing you wanna do is take the time to think through a process. Now don't think too hard and think about simple processes first. Answering phones, calling a customer, replying to a customer, taking, taking a sale in, fulfilling an order, dealing with a customer that's maybe happy or unhappy, doing something internally operational. I just mentioned to you our Google Classroom. In your case, it could be stocking or, or, or how to refill the products or how to place an order with your suppliers, right? Any of these processes, think about it and take the time to document. Think about one process only, and then take the time to start unfolding this process. Another example I have used before is not only the Google Classrooms, but the Zoom. You wanna set up a Zoom call, or Google Hangout, or whatever tool you wanna use. It doesn't really matter, okay? The point is, you wanna set it up. So what is needed? Well, first, you need to have access to that software. How do you go to it? What's the website? Do I have a, to have a login? All right, login information. So if you make the steps, right? First, go to this website. Second, login. Third, go to the meeting section. That's already a process. See, a lot of times, us entrepreneurs are so afraid of the word process because we think it's so complex. It's not. It can be, and it could possibly be complex once you start writing it all down. But if you take the time to write just these in steps, you already got 10, 15 steps to get going, that's a great start. Then maybe your next person that 
actually is doing the work, you say, hey, I made up these 10 steps. Can you add to them? Can you modify them? What else should we be thinking about? And they could also give you some more words to write or some more insights to explain. But the key with the process is to at least have the headlines, I'm gonna call it. And then you could start with, I'm gonna call them higher points, and then you can have sub points. So the higher points is setting up a Zoom call. That's the higher point. A sub point would be go to the Zoom website, create a meeting, uh, so this will be sections of it, right? Inviting people to the Zoom call. That could be another high point. And then underneath it, collect all the emails, make sure the emails are correct. Once you create the Zoom call, then I invite them to the, to the calendar. Invite them through the tool because it won't show who's invited or invite them through your calendar because you wanna show who's invited. Everything is gonna be different based on what you're trying to do. I'm just saying, think first high level, second, dig deeper on each one of them. And if you think about high level, most likely you have three to five to maybe seven steps, maybe 10 steps in anything that you do. And then underneath each one of them, there's probably a lot more steps. And that's okay, if you start with a high level, then you could fill in the shorter levels or the smaller levels as you continue to build your processes. You might be thinking, first, who cares? Who's gonna read this anyway? Well, if you're operating today in your business, that's awesome, I'm so glad to hear that. The challenge is if you plan to grow your business, you can't really grow by yourself. Well, you could try, and some people are successful with that and can't say that they're not, I'm just saying it's much easier if you had a team. It's much easier if you could build around people who could do some of these things for you. So what I'd recommend is for you to think about these processes and creating simple processes that you could maybe start handing over. Another thing I have always mentioned to entrepreneurs before, in the beginning, it might be good for you to go through it and do it yourself. But at one point, you have to think about what is this process or this action costing me? And there's a cost to it, right? There's a cost because someone else could be doing it, so there's a cost to pay them. But also there's a cost because if I'm doing this now, right now here, recording this as an example, I am not talking to the next potential customer. I am not taking the time to think about strategies for my business. I am not taking the time to think about what else can I be doing with my efforts or my resources or with my business. So there's a cost to that. So the reason I want you to create these processes is because maybe at a, the beginning, if you have no cash or you're short in cash or you're just a small business still trying to figure it out or a startup trying to figure it out, well, slowly you could start handing off some things, right? So maybe I could hire someone for five or 10 hours a week to do this one task for me. Cost me a hundred bucks because it's 20 bucks an hour for five hours. But then now I have these five free hours that I could strategize or do something else with my money or with my brain, or with my network, or with my work, or with the work that this person just created for me. So you wanna think through that to create a process. So documenting the process is key, because very easily be handed off to someone else, and very easily can be enhanced. What I've learned also through documenting the process is, sometimes actually, you will end up hiring, a lot of times, <laughs> you'll end up hiring people who are much better at it than you are. And the reason I say that, because they love doing that one thing and you like doing it, but it's just one of the things that you do where they love just handing that task and just going at it. And they actually might make your process much easier, much simpler, or they might find a better process. I use this one other example. I used to book my own time. And when I booked my own time, it was really easy. I tell you the time, I put a hold in my calendar and it's done. And then I had someone else helping me with booking my schedule. And I shared with them my process. Get the time, you put a block on your my calendar, and then you confirm it. And one of the things that they told me really quick, first, that worked for one or two, three or four, five people at a time. I'm dealing with 15 to 25 to 40 people at a time in a week trying to book time with you. That doesn't work if I put all those holes on the calendar. So I have a different system. And this is what I mean, like the system has to be open and flexible. She created an Excel sheet in this case. And then the Excel sheet has the time broken up and it's much more easier to manage that way. It works for her better, it works for me better, and it's working fabulously, right? So you have to think about, not only you wanna create the process, but you wanna leave room for your staff to improve it. And remember, if they love doing it, they might find a better, easier, faster, cheaper way to do it and get things done for you much better than you were doing it because you only did it once or a couple of times and you moved on, they're doing it every day and they're learning that there's a better way or a better tool to do it. 
So I want you to take the time to make this process is documented. I want you to take the time so you can think about your business and how you grow it. I want to say thank you for being with us here today.